Hi, this is Craig, and today we're going to learn how to edit drums, digital drums, in open sessions. Hi, this is Craig from Craig Colley Music. Welcome. If you're here for the first time, a special welcome. We're glad you're here and join us today. Today we're going to learn about how to edit drums, in this case, digital drums on our open sessions. We're working on recording the song from start to finish. It's a song called Kenny's Song. In past episodes, we've already talked about the writing, the arrangement. We've recorded the grand piano, the bass part, and edited those parts, ready to move on to the drums, which we have just recorded in the last episode. If you're watching for the first time, you probably want to go back and look at the previous episodes. A lot of what we're going to do today will make more sense if you do that. In this episode, we're going to edit the drum parts that we've recorded. Just in case you're here for the first time, a little tour of the studio. I'm sitting here in a very small space, but we have all sorts of cool stuff in here that we use on these videos. And I always say we, I got to stop doing that, that I use on these videos because you know what? It's just me in this room right now. So just you and I, we're just hanging out here. So I've got a camera set up here, number one camera, another one right over here to my side. I've got a, a camera that's going over the keyboard where I'm currently working at the workstation here. Uh, this is a side shot come from behind. You can see we have multiple screens here. I also have the actual screen they're going to be working on. This is the sequencer screen and then an overview of the studio from behind. And this is just a section of it. And if you are here for the first time, please subscribe. If you like the video, please like it and ring the bell. Then you'll be notified as new videos come out or when we go live. And we are working diligently to try to get to a thousand subscribers as this is a new channel. So by subscribing, you help us YouTubers out tremendously. So we really appreciate that. Now I've had many questions about how I do the tracks and how I do these recordings. My music that you can hear on all the major streaming services, Spotify and Apple and Prime. And you know, it's probably on 15 or 20 different services around the world. And I, the question always comes up because I'm a solo artist who plays multiple instruments how I do a lot of the things. And that is really the main reason I'm doing a video series on how I record a song from start to finish, take you on that journey. Now, what's interesting about this song, even though I've written it, I've not recorded it. And even the parts that I create, and I'm doing all this in real time. So you're going with me on that journey as I figure out what I'm going to do with this song instrument by instrument. I don't know how many instruments are going to add by the end of it, but there will be several, I know that, and as it's already built, there's three on it right now, and it's starting to sound pretty big already, as you're going to hear. But if you have a question, please put it in the comments, and I'd be happy to help you out with any answers I can come up with and see what I can do to help you. So let's switch over here to the sequence uh, window here, and I'm going to put my glasses on and be down in the right corner here so I can keep you company as we work through this. So just a quick review of this, this software here. This is... Mark of the Unicorns Digital Performer 10 that I use for the DAW, the Digital Audio Workstation. And you can see here that I have up on the screen, this is the bass guitar part here, down here are all the drum tracks that I just recorded in MIDI. And the difference in, this is an audio track, MIDI tracks, they look different and they are edited differently. And if you remember from the previous sessions, editing the audio is a certain kind of process. This MIDI process is the same yet different, and I'm going to get into that right now. Once again, an overview of the project. This is our main template that I use uh, consistently with all the songs that I have created. And as you can see, everything is organized. So as I go through this recording, I already have a preset folder sets of where the new instruments are going to go. And they're also color keyed, so it's easy to keep track of them as well. Right here is the grand piano parts that we have already recorded. In blue is the bass. And in this purple or kind of, I guess it's a purple color. Uh, down here is our new drum track right here. Also on the screen, I'll zoom in a little bit. We have our markers. So I can see where I am in the song. This window here is the performance of the computer. How much the plugins are taking as far as the CPU use. And if you use a lot of plugins, as you'll see this project will grow and grow and grow with plugins. Plugins are additives to the each channel that, that you do something different to the sound. And I'll explain more of that later if you're new to that piece of it. And I try and keep these sessions somewhat creative when we're recording and somewhat a little more technical when I'm doing the editing. So you get kind of both sides. And if you're not a tech person, then maybe a lot of this won't 
interest you that much. If you're a creative person, the recording process is in the previous video to the edit. That's, that's how this series has, has been going so far. Let me zoom back out. Get the full screen here, back to 100%. And now we're going to go to a sequence window. And the sequence window is just showing more of a close-up. I also have control over how big the screen shows me the MIDI inf information, the, the notes on the MIDI, and also the size of this window here. And by using this control here, I can make that bigger or smaller as well on the keyboard. Or I can also do it down in the corner of the... I can also do it down here in the corner of the software to make it bigger and smaller. In some cases, I will do that. I don't really need these that tall, so I'm going to bring this back a little bit so I can see more of the notation. And just for your information, the notes are what you see in these colors here. These other little dots on the screen have to do with the volume or velocity of how loud a note is played and if it's uh, how long it's sustained in some cases and maybe some panning, some other things that happen. But right now we're just going to focus on fixing the notes. So this song started out with grand piano only. I'm going to put the pianos on for a second here. You can see the piano part starts first here in this point here. And if I set the marker over here on this counter here, it'll start with a four count. And if I go to that point, then it starts at the top of the piece. So now I'm going to put my headphones on and we'll start working our way through this. So I've hit the play bar here. Now we've got our, got the piano part there. You can see on the screen that this is where the bass comes in. So the bass comes in there, bass comes in there. I need to check one other thing here first. I want to make sure that my, this just is a side note on the technology. This here is a plugin that I use to control the volume of the music when I'm talking. And I'll give you an example. As I speak, I'm going to play a little sample of the music. And then when I talk on top of it, it actually turns the music down a little bit automatically. It comes back up when I'm not talking. So I'm not yelling over the music all the time. This is called side chaining. And we'll get into more of that into another video. This is just something that I have set up on this channel for this specific reason so that it makes it easier to talk over the music. Very similar to how uh, a DJ would talk over a song on the radio. It's called neen or ducking using your voice or your VO on that. So we'll go back here to the sequence. I'll close that plugin. And I'm gonna go back to now and we are going to start editing this process and this drum part. So I'm gonna move here. I don't really need to see these dots above. I just need to see the sounds. So these purple markings down here indicate the notes that I played. So here's a snare drum. Here's a kick drum. Gotta get in the right spot hi-hat there and mainly this is hi-hat and the hi-hat has different positions that's why you see different notes for the hi-hat and this would be a crash cymbal up here and they're short because there's only a quick entry when it's a drum part so now we're going to play through this and we're going to listen and see what i need to fix in the editing process so i'm going to start it right at the second verse where the drums come in Edit. There's something, looks like there's almost a double hit on the snare there. It looks like right there is something, and that was slightly out of time. I can move it over. Uh, one thing I do want to show you, there's a, a section up here, and this is, this is where you can quantize to a note or keep it locked to a note value, the quarter note or eighth note or dotted eighth and so on. And when this is on, you can only move a note that value. 
And in this case, I want it off because I'm moving them just slight increments and not something that's locked to a certain time. Uh, because if I have it locked to that for this specific purpose, it makes it way more robotic. And I definitely want to keep the feel of what the song is all about in all the instruments. And it's not meant to be perfect. Humans are imperfect creatures and our music is imperfect too. Sometimes, I remember, I, honestly, I did it in the past where I would have everything spot on, the beat on every instrument. And some of those older tracks to me, they sound like a robot because I, just because I could tighten them up that squeaky tight to be exactly the right spot that I did that. I don't do that anymore. I want to feel the music there. Not so much because I can do it in the computer. So the computer I use is really another instrument, not something that controls everything by a certain amount of a math that's applied to it. Now that's, you can, here's a good visual aspect of that note there. This one's a little ahead of the beat. I'm going to slide it back a little bit. Now, actually, I'm going to go back because that was a little ahead of the beat. So what I'm going to do with this, I look at where the, the bass and the piano hit. And I can see that all three of them are different in this case. Kick drum looks a little ahead of that. I'm going to back that up a little bit. Although the piano hits here and the bass is a little ahead of it. I may have to adjust the bass at this point as well. So that sounds... Yeah, that's definitely ahead. I turn these off and listen to the piano part for a moment. Yeah, I don't, I'm going to fix this base edit. So I'm going to cut there. I'm going to cut here. I'm going to slide this back just slightly. I'm going to get the base and the piano lined up first. There we go. And then I'm going to slide this kick over to match that a little bit closer. Still sounds a little ahead. There we go. So I'll back that up, put it in perspective. There we go. Now you can see there's a gap in the bass part there, so I can just pull those together as much as possible, get them pretty close. I'll put a little crossfade on either one of both of those breaks, and I'll put a crossfade there. I'm going to check that edit. But it goes by so fast that even, even if there's a gap, you don't hear it, particularly when there's other instruments. And that's really important to, to note is that a lot of times, People in sessions will spend so much time on something that overall, when there's lots of instruments and other things added, you don't hear it at all. So I spend my time on things I know are going to matter in the big picture, not so much in the small picture that I may be the only one who ever knew it existed or is even in the piece. Okay, these I want really tight. You hear the kicks a little head on that one. I'm going to pull that back just slightly. There we go. And you can see right there, the kick is in line with the grand, but the bass is a little behind. I'm going to tighten this bass up here. And I normally wouldn't do this, except I want these really punchy, and this is what will achieve that. go and I actually have this set up for these crossfades are automatically in there S slight milliseconds are added but I always like to add a another one on top just to be sure so I don't have some unwanted or, or something some click develops later and I can't find it when I have uh, a lot more tracks than we do now check that again okay right there I hit a snare and a kick, and I can see that I also have a crash there, and the kick was a little little ahead, so I'm going to move that kick over. There we go. I don't think I like the, the uh, snare on that. I was cracking the snare on the cymbal crack, so I don't like it there. There we 
go. And sounds like a little bit of a lag on those three hits. And it's because I'm hitting the snare at the same time. Sounds like the snares are all a little anticipated too early. I'm going to back them up a little bit. And let's see what this one is. And I know I talked before about lining things up exactly, but there's a few spots that it's very, very useful to do it, but only in a few spots on a song, not, not the entire song. I'll pull that back a little bit and see what that sounds like. Now it falls in line. Just back up and get perspective on it. And right there, sounds like my kick's just a slight bit ahead. And a lot of times the piano is kind of an arpeggiated role, so there's no matter what you do, you really can't get some things together completely, but see what this works. Beautiful. The difference of that little millisecond. Now I'll redo it. I know it's very subtle, but that's when it falls right in that pocket. It's right in that groove, and I was just slightly ahead on the kick drum. Now, in that last phrase, you may hear a little inconsistency in the hi-hat not being just a perfect t -t 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 -t. but that's okay because that's what a hi-hat does. It's not, a, it's not a robot. It's not meant to be that. It's supposed to be expressive. It's another, it's another instrument. It kind of goes in and out even volume-wise, but that's okay. That one, it kind of dropped out right there, though. I want to see what that is about. Okay, that one there. Let's take that out. I've noticed that since I have adjusted my hi hat sound, which I had a lot of trouble with, I talked about it a little bit in the uh, the gear video that I used to record and videotape with. I talked a little bit about the actual instruments that I use. And the drum set is you know, literally right, right behind me here, right here. So with the full another station that I showed in the last video that I could jump over there right now and fix something if I wanted to from a recording side and not even have to change anything because everything's set up. It's not on right now because I don't, I don't think I need to do that. But what I realized is that my hi-hat pedal is so sensitive that it throws some things into the mix, like these little sounds that I don't really want there, so I can take them out. And that's what made that hi-hat sound kind of weird. And I noticed I had to be really careful with just where my foot sits on the hi-hat because it's causing these unwanted entries of data that mess up the sound. something happened. Let me check that out. Oh, I intentionally left a, a kick out there, which is fine. Sometimes while I'm doing this, I'm hearing things. I'm not talking through every aspect. I stop and I'll check something out. So that's what's going to happen in this video as well. Right there. Now that one probably fell off. I'm going to move that up in this position. See if that helps. Right there, kind of.
kind of if those snare hits is off it looks like it's probably that one and see where this lines up here still sounds ahead of it so sometimes it's deceiving Put that back slightly the kick back a little bit and my ear is very tuned into this obviously if i hear him i can stop right away and fix him and normally if i wasn't talking through a video this probably would be done already but i'm showing this so you can learn and figure out how i do it and then if you like to try something on your own this is how, how I approach it. Maybe this will help. Another one there. And like I said, I am not the world's greatest drummer. And in this song, it's just more about showing you how you can do this. Another one. And also during the recording process, I know that being not really being a drummer i will never get it spot on every time but i know i can adjust things just like i'm doing now so i'll get them relatively close and capture the feel of everything and then from that point i'll go in and do the tweaking like we're doing right now because i can not only hear it but i can also see how how out of time that that was a little bit there I have a very anticipated kick same thing there and the cymbal crashes are also happening so you want that kick and crash to happen really at the same time now there that needed another crash on that I'm not sure what happened Got it there, it's not big enough. Let's move it to one that, see, I'm gonna pull this out a little bit to get a little more control over it. And something I wanna show you, I'll pull this one out too. So I zoomed into this crash here and I wanna show you something. If I click on that crash, this value here from one, zero to 127 is the volume. If I went to, let's say 43, that sound is much lower. If I go to 89, it's it louder. And if I go to 127 where it was, it gets louder. So on this other crash, it needed to be louder. Which is hopefully this one here. There we go. Now, even though that one says that one says 98, we're gonna go to 127 on that. So we get a louder crash. Put this in perspective, zoom back out. And listen again. There we go. Go down there and back up and see where we left off. There we got into that pretty deep. All right. Same thing with those snares. I'm gonna work on those a little bit. They're all a little bit ahead. And once again, I, I do use visuals, like I said before, on some of this to see where I'm at. And actually, I see the bass is off just slightly in that. So I'm going to put a cut there and undo that. Put a little cut there. And I want that first note to be a little more on time. There we go. The hit's right there. And the snare is all of us a little ahead of the time. Actually grab two notes at a time, move them. I'm going to do that with all three of those. Yeah, what a difference. Listen to the difference in that. But uh, you don't get that staggered thing. You get them tight. Now, like I said, for certain things, that's what you want. So those are the parts that are a little, little off. I can also use the H, which is a hand tool. 
and slide around that way makes it a little easier. I think all of those are anticipated. I can grab all three of the kicks this way and move them back and see where I'm at. It might just be the snares. I'm going to move the kicks back. I think the kicks are okay, except for the last one. And once again, I definitely use a visual on this. Snares are definitely ahead and behind. Let's line them up and take a chance that this will work. Yep. Listen again. Okay, that definitely was staggered on that hit there. I also have this control on the keyboard right here. I've got controls in, in these, uh, this keypad here. I can skip back a bar or I can skip back two or two or three bars and it makes it moving around a little easier this way too. So there's definitely some shortcuts that I use. I don't talk about them that often just because I'm not used to talking about them, honestly. But that is uh, very convenient too, rather than always using this this command to go bigger and slower, just try and move around. Uh, but I'm going to go back and find where we were there since I bounced around a little bit there and listen. All right, there, there's a symbol that needs to be louder. I get to find that. Sometimes it's a little difficult because I'm not seeing everything on the screen at once. And I'm going to make this a little smaller so maybe I can see the notes a little bit better. A little more broad view of the whole project and I can actually make it a little wider. Right there, that one there. That one came in here at 94, so let's raise that up to 127. See if that helps. There we go. Now, that's, I hear things at different times, so I'll stop periodically. Right there. Let's move both of those back a little bit. And that crash a little bit as well. Sometimes you get rogue notes or double notes, and sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it does. snare is definitely not needed there and it's going to take it out Microphone. That's why the music got a little strange there, because it is bumping this mic will cause the sound to fluctuate on the entire track, which just happened. This last retard part, the slowing down part, is going to be a little tough to link together, but that's what we're going to do right now. I can tell my slowing down is going to have to be incremental, and I have to listen first a few times to get this. And I'm just going to be moving things slightly and doing it as I go. Check that again. Okay, that's pretty close. I'm going to take this whole tom section and slide it over a little bit. Actually, this, this very last one needs to be moved just a little bit. There we go. And then the last hit we want dead on. Let's see. Here. It's pretty close. And there's two cymbals and a kick. Let's zoom in a little bit.
interesting because sometimes this one symbol triggers just two different notes. I don't need that on. And my kick is slightly late. Let's see what we have here. There we go. And if these are staggered, that's fine because I hit two symbols at once. And if I bring up the interface of the Superior Drummer from, from TuneTrack, you'll see that the both symbols will light up when I hit that section. And just for fun, we'll show the drums here and we'll back this track up a little bit. And we'll play that last part and see, you can see the drums being played. There you can see both symbols were hit there as well. So I don't use that very often when I'm actually editing or tracking, but it is, I, th I still think it's pretty cool that you can see and, and do that. I'll, I'll leave it up there because it's not really in the way of anything. Uh, let me back up and check one thing though. Now that I said that, it's a little bit in the way. Let me move it up here. That one is a little ahead. These sounds still a light, slightly ahead. I'll move those slightly. And because I moved that last Tom, I need to move this one just slightly to keep that in balance. There we go. Our drum track is now edited. So in review, we went through this thing and listened to the parts in critical detail. Now let's have a listen through the piece and make sure there's nothing else left to do. I know this is kind of a, a step that most people may skip, but I always want to listen through one time just to be objective about it. And we can watch the drums on the screen and see if there's anything I missed or want to change. And never just trust that I got it the first time and don't go back and listen again. You always have to do that. Here we go. spot right there some things that aren't dead on I, I i leave some of them it gives it more of a human feel
lining up right there. Yeah, it's a little, little too far ahead there. something here. All right, there's that symbol right in the middle there. This one. That's down at 94. I'm going to bring that up to 127. There you go. Now you can hear them all just all clearly. And this one, I'll probably bring that up a little bit too. I want those hitting hard. One thing I point out while I'm doing that is that if you look at the screen here, you'll see the different symbols that I use. Got this one, this one, this one. That one always hits louder when I do it there for some reason. There's the ride symbol. This one, uh, I don't believe I'm using in this particular kit, and I don't use I don't use that tom either. It's just these four toms here. They are available if I wanted to use it. And then this is a uh, combination of multiple snares, but we'll get into that in another tutorial. Back up and watch the cymbals. If I wanted to have, instead of this symbol hit, it's as simple as me just moving it to another symbol. But I like that little splash symbol. It's just, it's cool. A little double kick there. I'm not sure I want to keep it. Take that out and see what it's like without it. Yep. Take the wrong one out. That one out. So there you have it. There we go. Oh, well, that gives me two views there. How you doing? <laughs> All right. So that is our song edited with the drums now in place. So we've got the grand piano done, the bass done, and now the drums are done. The next thing we're going to be adding is acoustic guitar, which will be coming in the next episode. So hopefully this open session has helped you learn how to edit drums, in this case, digital drums. And in whatever world that you're living in, if you're a musician and a home studio owner and this is helpful, please let me know in the comments. If you're here for the first time or a return visitor, please subscribe. Like the video if you liked it. Please tell your friends and colleagues about the new channel. And we're going to do lots of songs this way. This is just the very first one. This channel's brand new. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers as soon as possible because that helps us get it out there even more. It's always tough in the initial stages of starting the channel, and that's where we're at. But I don't mind a tough challenge. That's why I picked music as a career. <laughs> if I was afraid of that, I would have never done this. 
So I'm excited to uh, get this far because in my head, I, I've heard the bass in my head and I heard the drums in my head and I wrote it on the piano and I know the next instrument coming is going to add even more and there's lots of things that are going to just uh, build this thing out to an entire finished piece, which I'm excited about and taking you along on that journey as we discover it and figure it out together. If you have any comments, questions, let me know. I think there's a floating graphic over here with comments. And also, if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one consultation, I offer that as well. If you want to speed up the process and work with me on an independent basis, you can really focus in on what exactly it is that you want to learn instead of just waiting through a video and hoping that it will finally cover it, some aspect of it. I know I've done that a lot. Watch a video and then hope they're going to get to the question I had. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. So in this case, I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. But if you have more, please let me know. This is Craig Colley signing off. Thanks for hanging out today, and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. And yeah, and this is it. This is, it's over. Th th this video is done now. And now I'm turning off the system. Bye-bye.